come to Stefoodle, I am, unsurprisingly, Steph. I've been customizing dolls for almost half a year now, and I've wanted to start making YouTube videos for a while. So, here I am. Recently, I took part in a collab hosted by the lovely Tindalograms on Instagram, and it was a color palette collab. We chose a color palette from the ones provided and made a doll with a summery theme based on it. I chose Bright Forest because I already had most of the materials I'd need, and we all know what was going on at the time, <laughs> and I immediately thought of a girl who likes to wander through the woods. So let's get started. I knew I wanted to use a Howling Wolf doll, but which Howling? This one has lovely soft hair that I thought it would be a shame to change, but it's not quite the vibe I was going for, and the highlights were slightly the wrong color. However, her hands were much more relaxed and less claw-like, so let's swap them. There we go! I'll also be using the other Helene's boots because the detail is really nice and they'll look great after painting. Okay, I've undressed her and chopped her hair off, so let's dunk her in a cup of boiling water. I put her in a plastic bag because I don't want her to be wet, just warmed up enough to make the vinyl soft enough so I can remove her head safely. I know a lot of people just dunk them right in there, but... I don't know why, I don't want her to be wet. Now I can use a pair of old tweezers to scrape the inside of her head to remove all the glue and the rest of the hair. It's really satisfying, but also gross. Just look at the amount of gunk that's inside this head. Next, I clean off the factory paint with pure acetone. Then I painted the scalp in a similar color to the hair I'll be using, and I cover that in a layer or two of Mod Podge just to help keep the paint from chipping off as I reroute. Speaking of the reroute, I'll be mostly using this buttercream kiwi nylon, as well as some of this candy pink shimmer kiwi nylon, both from Retro Dolls UK. It's so soft. I use a little piece of cardboard to help hold the hair I'm working with. Oop. Almost forgot to spray the hank down with water. That's a trick I learned from the doll fairy one of her videos. It makes the hair so much more manageable. I have the hair, the doll head, a large doll needle, and a couple of lengths of thread. I use the sewing method of rerouting. It holds strong without any glue. It does take a little bit longer, but I think I've actually gotten pretty speedy at it. First, I peel away a very small amount of hair for the first hair plug. One thing I've learned, always use less hair than you think. <laughs> so I take that hair plug, I find the middle, and I fold it in half, creating a loop. I take one of the lengths of thread, thread it through the loop. Match the ends of the thread together. and thread the needle. And I thread the needle. There we go. Said thread a lot. It's a lot, a lot of use of the word thread. Then I stab it into the head. After it's a little ways in, I angle the needle so that it comes out of the neck hole. Then I pull the needle through and tug on the thread until the hair plug just sticks out over the neck hole, about a centimeter. Then I do it all again, only this time I hold down the first plug with one of my fingers. Once the needle is just poking out of the neck hole, I loop the first plug over the needle, then I pull the needle through. I hold down the second plug and then remove the thread from the first plug. And I pull it taut from the outside. So that plug is being kept in place by the second plug, nice and strong. So let's do it one more time. Grab a plug of hair, add the thread, thread the needle, stab the head, loop the previous plug over the needle, Pull it through, remove the thread from the previous plug, and pull it taut. There you go! 
But what do you do when you get to the end of a section, like the hairline? With the last two plugs sticking out of the neck hole, you take one of the threads and make sure it goes through both plugs. Then you can remove the extra bit of thread to reuse it later. Tie the plugs together with a few knots. Usually I do three, but I think I did four here. <laughs> yep, I did. Trim the excess thread. Then pull both plugs taut. And there you go. Now I just need to reroute the rest. See you in a few days. With the reroute done, I do a quick boil wash to set the part and wait a day for it to dry. Now it's time for sealant. I use Mr. Super Clear like a lot of people, and it can be heavily affected by the weather. And the weather does not like to play nice in Northern Ireland at the best of times. So when it's cold or rainy, I spray my MSC either outside if it's not raining, or through the back door while wearing a respirator, of course, uh, because it is toxic. <laughs> and then I dry it under the kitchen extractor fan and close off the kitchen. So the extractor fan will whoop with those fumes. Wait 30 minutes and you're good to go. I usually start with two coats. I decided to do some minimal body blushing this time. So before I sprayed the body with MSC, I sanded it down with a nail buffer just to remove the glossy top coat. That helps the MSC stick a little bit better. Now, the face-up. Or rather, the first face-up. <laughs> I wanted to make her eyes a bit rounder, so I drew against the mold. And usually that's fine, I've done it plenty of times, but it didn't really end up working this time. I also hadn't realized that my can of MSC was really low, causing me to get a very uneven coverage between layers, which was not helping me either. So that combined with the bad weather caused my pencils to scratch away at the layers below or not stick at all. So I started lifting pigment from the pencils with a brush. It worked at first, but because I'm not as delicate with a brush as I am with a pencil, I ended up making her eyes larger but they just looked like they'd slipped down her face, <laughs> so they were too low. I also ended up so frustrated that I repainted the eyes white again. And again, the pencils wouldn't stick, and so I painted the irises again. I wanted to save it so badly because I really liked everything but the eyes. But I knew at this rate I'd just keep making layer after layer after layer after layer and I'd never be happy with it. And yeah, I had to admit that I hated it. So I wiped it and I started over, following the eye mold a little more closely this time and also using a fresh can of MSC. And I'm glad I did. I've had to do this for a few different dolls and I've never regretted wiping the face of a doll I wasn't happy with.
I think I did a decent job recreating what I liked about the first face up, like the slightly worried looking eyebrows. I think they're cute. After two final MSC layers, the face up is done. Now we can free her hair. I am a bit worried that I didn't root the part thickly enough. Yup. I was right. It's too sparse. I ran out of the buttercream, but I think adding a bit more candy pink will suit her nicely. So I did that off camera. To reattach the head, I do pretty much the same thing I did to remove it. I place the head in a plastic bag, let it soak in boiling water until the vinyl is squishy, and reattach it to the body carefully. Usually I like to do this before I do a face up because I'm always worried that I'll crack it or damage it in some way, but she turned out fine. I trimmed her hair and styled it by pulling the two front pieces back with a small elastic and added a bit of green ribbon. Next, I add gloss to her lips and eyes, just to make them shiny. Now for accessories. I'm actually really proud of this bag that I made. I used cereal box cardboard, some faux leather I painted brown, and some cotton fabric for the lining. I also made her a tiny sketchbook. I'd done bookbinding before in college, and I still had some materials for it, but I'd never made a book this tiny before. The book fits in the bag nicely, because I made it to fit nicely. <laughs> I also made a teeny tiny pencil out of a piece of bamboo skewer, and that'll go in her bag too. I repainted the shoes brown and used some watered down black paint to age them a bit. Then I picked out some of the details with gold paint. I also made flower decorations for her hair by layering two punch paper flower shapes, stabbing a pin through, painting the center yellow, and coating them a few times in Mod Podge while sort of molding and manipulating the petals. I was able to create Little Summer Cosmos, which is a nice little reference to Animal Crossing. I also used a bit of the dark green paper left over from the book cover as some foliage underneath. I made her a cute little strawberry dress, an embroidered pinafore, and some yellow slouchy socks. Time to get her all dressed! I decided that Willow was a fitting name <laughs> because it's a tree and there's a bird that can be seen in the summertime in the UK called a Willow Warbler, which goes with the bird that's on our sketchbook. I like to imagine she goes out into the woods and sketches birds and runs around and it's fun. <laughs> Despite some ups and downs, I'm happy with how she turned out. I hope you like her too. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you enjoyed it so much you want to see more. Ring that notification bell to be alerted when I post new videos because that's a thing YouTubers say, right? And I'm a YouTuber now. And this is YouTube. So it must be said. Or else. Anywho, until next time. Bye!